Thank you very much, um, and good morning to everyone. So I'm going to talk about um, two things um, that I think hopefully fit very nicely with the theme of this session. Um, firstly, how Hypercat, and I'm speaking for Hypercat, and I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, I also work for Flexize, a software business that basically runs the program for Hypercat. So I'm going to talk about how Hypercat is um, building the smart strategy for what will be the largest regeneration program uh, across the UK. And then I'm going to talk about some of the things that underpin that, uh, enable that, the interoperability that you were referring to um, a few moments ago. So what are we doing? We're, we're building this smart strategy. Um, we're doing it for um, a part of um, West London uh, where there's a very exciting project that's being formed, a uh, creation of a development corporation. Uh, so I think it's the second one after what's now become uh, London Legacy, uh, you know, what was the, the Olympic area. Um, and so this is Old Oak and Park Royal Development Corporation. Um, it's, a, it's a part of London that combines um, uh, some, some existing housing, um, uh, worm scrubs, which is uh, an area of parkland, um, and uh, a very large industrial estate, one of the largest in, uh, in London. Um, and, and the thing that's really transforming it, and the reason why it's become a development corporation, um, is that there are a couple of major transport infrastructure investments that are happening uh, right there. Actually, in this, uh, it's in this spot here. <laughs> Sorry, I don't have a pointer. Um, and, and that's where um, uh, High Speed 2 is due to have a station and Crosswell. So they come together and it becomes a really important transport hub. Um, so because of that, the um, decision was taken to basically give this, um, these development powers and it cuts across three different London boroughs uh, to Old Oak and Park Royal Development Corporation, which was set up in April this year. So what are they doing? Um, well, they think that this can have a really big impact on the local area, um, as well as helping more broadly across London in terms of its transport infrastructure. I mean, a key thing to take from here is it's, it's not just transport. Um, they think that this is something that can create around 65,000 jobs locally. Um, that can lead to building of um, 25,000 uh, new homes and around double the number of residents, according to the, the dwelling size. Um, and you know, the, the stations that will be created will be equivalent in size to, to Waterloo. Um, so a significant number of benefits and, and billions to the local economy um, all coming together in one space. So very exciting as a development, clear in terms of the numbers, but hopefully in terms of what it means for people living locally in terms of creating, creating jobs locally, in terms of uh, uh, partially addressing some of the housing challenges that London faces. The exciting thing and the reason why, why Hypercat is involved um, is that um, OPDC have decided that they want to embrace smart technology and thinking right from the start. Um, and so they've asked um, uh, Hypercat. So Hypercat is effectively um, working on some standards around the Internet of Things, but by doing so it's brought together hundreds of different organizations that want to work together around smart and making smart stuff happen, and particularly with a good focus around doing that in cities across the UK and internationally. So they've asked Hypercat to work with them to create um, for them and with them a smart vision and strategy. Um, the, the chart here shows some um, sketches. They're not meant to be kind of actual final designs or anything um, from OPDC that are just illustrative of the area. Um, you know, it's a, it's a dense development, um, it's going to um, you know, create plenty of opportunities, it's also going to create some interesting challenges in terms of um, the flow of traffic and people through that area. Um, so they absolutely want to ensure that this strategy addresses issues that have to do with, with transport, with energy, with sustainability, other, other big challenges and opportunities. Clearly it needs to be, anything that happens needs to be both physically and digitally secure and resilient. Um, so how are, we, how are we doing this? Well, you could have just commissioned a big report, right? You could ask any of the you know, fantastic consultancies that are out there to just write a big study on it, and, and that would have you know, delivered some, some, some good thinking. Um, but the challenge here is that we're looking at development that will extend over decades and is really quite rich and complex. And so, you know, again, the reason why they asked Hypercat to work with them on this is that they wanted to take a kind of collaborative approach. They wanted to crowdsource the best thinking from across a, a, a great multitude of different um, large and small enterprises um, and other public sector organizations. So that's exactly what we've been doing over the last few months. So we've been taking this 
crowdsourced approach. So we did a deal with um, uh, with uh, OPDC. We've been bringing in um, people through a, a kind of intense program of um, workshops, um, around um, 37 workshops, another another half dozen on a related topic. So taking it to to over 40 in um, in just a few months. Um, we took a, a space in the um, Urban Innovation Center in London to do that, which is part of the Future Cities Catapult, um, and brought in a, a great range of really fantastic um, thinkers to, to help us do that um, across a, a variety of different sort of themes and topics, some of them having to do with specifically an environment, some to do with utilities, transport, others making sure we came at this very much in terms of what it means for um, citizen-centric services, and they, they tended intentionally to cut across each other to make sure that we understood where the opportunities were for, for collaboration and to join stuff up. What this means underneath it is, of course, that in response is different. It's going to lead to, to different business models. Yes, different technologies, but different ways of doing things, different commercial models, different ways of delivering things. And this might seem a bit frivolous, perhaps, but you know, it's a picture of a drone delivering some stuff that has to do with healthcare. Um, but there was an interesting um, uh, article in um, the BBC recently that uh, many of you may well have seen about using drones to monitor landfill sites and the level of methane there, um, you know, ahead of what's happening with um, COP21 this week. So uh, I think you need to think in, in a fairly imaginative way about how technologies might be applied, but their usefulness and the value that they might generate. And a lot of this technology is going to be it's going to involve things, um, you know, this so-called Internet of Things, this, this kind of catch-all phrase that tries to encapsulate everything sometimes. Um, and uh, you know, th things can be valuable only if they are part of delivering a, a better service, um, but then they, they can potentially create their own challenges or requirements. If we've got lots of different stuff out there that's sensing things or trying to actuate, control things, then you know, it also needs to be powered, it needs to be maintained. So some of the clever stuff that's coming out of these workshops and that we see more widely um, is around you know, how, how can you power that, how can you harvest energy, how can you do so in a, a cost-effective cost effective and, and uh, environmentally attractive fashion. Um, so there's some stuff out there, for example, um, I think this one comes from a company called Drayson Technologies, which is about harvesting energy from Wi-Fi, but there are a bunch of other similar approaches out there. So you need to, if you're going to take a smart approach, um, absolutely it needs to be driven by the requirements, by the desire to improve services, to do so very much with the citizen in mind. But I think when one looks at the OPDC, also in terms of the wider benefits um, and applicability across London, it's going to lead to the, um, you know, a set of new technologies and services that underpin that. But what's, what's tended to happen is that that's, Naturally, things have tended to happen in silos in the past, that you, you have a great development um, in one case, as uh, I think uh, Councillor Trickett was saying, you, you, know, you have something that happens as a silo, as a, as a, as a pilot, as a project. And, and the, the, the challenge and the opportunity is to join those up. So you have this rather tricky word of interoperability. Um, the fact that actually a lot of the value comes from saying, well, I've got some temperature-related data over here, and in a completely different application, I've got some over there as well. Could I bring them together? Could I create some new service off the back of that? Or something that might have to do with traffic monitoring, you know, taking CCTV data with information that comes from our smartphones with something entirely different from a formal traffic management system. So I think addressing this interoperability challenge is, is core to you know, one of the technical challenges, one of the things that needs to be addressed um, in order for SMART to work. So if you think about it, you've got collaboration of organizations and almost the collaboration of the technology making it work together. And there's a big prize here. So um, McKinsey, and then, you know, there are loads of different numbers bashed around on, on the internet thing. So, um, it's not so much that I would say to pay attention to any particular number, um, but they have said that there could be a total value, not market size, total value around Internet of Things of around $11 trillion um, by 2025, I think it is. Um, even if you're skeptical about the size of that, the important thing is they say that 40% um, of that comes from interoperability. So if you don't have interoperability, if things can't talk to things, if you can't combine data, create new services, then you lose a mass of that value. 
And as I think you were saying um, in the introduction, you know, that's important not just for the big guys out there, but you know, really for the SMEs, the innovators, and so on. If you can make it easier to bring data together that they didn't originally create, then they can innovate off the back of it quite, quite simply. And the trend towards open data stores is an important part of that. But what you find is that even if the data is open, it can still be difficult to combine. So this is where Hypercat comes in. So I've talked about Hypercat's role in terms of um, fostering collaboration um, around um, smart city strategy for the OPDC. Um, the original reason why Hypercat was set up and why so many companies have come behind it to back it is to address this challenge of Internet of Things interoperability. And we're doing that around a particular area. Um, don't worry, I'm not going to go into sort of the nitty gritty of the, of the technology, but if you envisage that there are classically sort of technology stacks, you know, different, different technology combining up from, from physical things, devices uh, in the Internet of Things that, that monitor stuff, um, air quality or other environmental factors or stuff to do with um, uh, energy, temperature, building performance or so. Um, they tend to be naturally, as most industries and area are, uh, in, in silos. And that's fine, you can deliver value from that. As soon as you try and combine them, it's problematic. And there are a bunch of different organizations out there looking at that around things that have to do with communications protocols and all that kind of stuff. Hypercat is looking at a rather different area, um, and it's simpler in a way. Um, it's trying to do something that's quite light and easy to implement, and that's around the the data. So it's purely looking at how it's possible to combine data from different applications and services and create new ones. You know, so you've got something that has been done by a building management company that someone who um, is going to install a new piece of equipment in that building needs to have access to. And what that means is that you can move from having old-fashioned value chains, sort of fairly linear and straightforward, to value webs, where you can have a multitude of different combinations of data and organizations over time and not be constrained in terms of this interoperability channel. That could be applied anywhere. A simpler example of a, of a refuse truck um, where actually you could have a multitude of different sensors. It's not just about scheduling of, um, of waste deliveries where there's been lots of good work done so far. So a multitude of different things, each individually valuable. The way you combine them, the value is massively expanded, and the potential for innovation is so much greater. And what, um, what Flexi is doing as part of this, so the company I work for that is program managing Hypercat, it, it also provides um, software and technology that helps it's possible to, makes it possible to make those applications faster. So if you like, Hypercat is part of doing that, and, and the technology we provide um, accelerates and accentuates that. Hypercat's being implemented right now um, across a bunch of different vertical areas, um, so 11 different spearheads, most of which have an industry flavor, um, so across buildings, energy, other utilities and so on, um, things that have to do with fleet and logistics management. And that continues, that's kind of halfway through and that will start to come to fruition during next year. We also see that Hypercat's being used in a variety of different data stores, starting to be in London, in Milton Keynes and other cities, and, and individual companies are looking at doing that for themselves as well. So there's a lot going on, um, hopefully a lot that um, will deliver great value with, um, with OPDC, um, and the, the big project that they're, they're planning right now. Um, and as you see, that what sits underneath that is clear thinking about smart, smart strategies, smart technologies, but where um, interoperability, the ability to combine different data into new services, is key to making that happen and key to involving um, and driving innovation from SMEs um, and a bunch of new entrants um, and a couple of ways you can find out about Hypercat. Thank you. Thank you.